Hello and welcome to Enemy Paradise. Today I'm going to show you how to download and play Nintendo 64 ROMs. Now you'll be able to get everything you need here, which is the emulator and the ROM, the read-only memory from the cartridge itself. So first things first, we're going to go get the emulator at the emulator section. We're going to load up the list of platforms that can be emulated. It's quite expensive. So we're going to go to Nintendo 64, we're going to load up the operating systems that can be emulated on, and we're going to go to Windows in this specific case, since we're on Windows 7, and we're going to go to Project 64, since that's the uh, one I prefer. If you have one that you prefer, go ahead and use that instead, but I'm going to recommend this one for this video. And we click here to download it, save file, and it's already done, it's a very small program. We'll minimize this. Go to Sean, my name, downloads, and there's Project 64. We'll just double click on that and run it. Now, it shouldn't take too long to install. So, while that's happening, let's go to ROMs, ISOs, and games, and we're going to go get a ROM to play. And we're going to scroll down, oh look, it's already done. And we're going to scroll down until we see Nintendo 64 ROMs. Now, here will be the front page. You'll have the most popular N64 ROMs. We're going to be downloading the Ocarina of Time, aka Legend of Zelda, the Ocarina of Time, and uh, be playing that on the emulator. Even though it's right there though, we're going to do this through this link here, which is the full directory. You'll pull up this directory, and step one, choose a letter. So we're going to go with L, Legend of Zelda. In this case it's not THE Legend of Zelda. So we're going to scroll down till we see THE Legend of Zelda, or Legend of Zelda THE Ocarina of Time, um, and we're going to go with the regular version. There are other versions to go for, so um, if you wanted to, you could play the Master Quest version, or even Majora's Mask, which is my favorite Zelda, besides Twilight Princess, but that's all personal preference. We click on Ocarina of Time, and we just scroll down. There'll be reviews and screenshots you can look at. Scroll and oh, sorry, almost went past it. There's the download link right there. It says 26 megabytes next to it. It's not a very big game compared to modern standards. Only 32 megabytes unpacked. I click here. So if you're sparse on hard drive space, it's a lot of bang for your buck. There we go save file. It doesn't take too long to download depending on your internet connection. Mine's fairly fast but it is going over Wi-Fi so it's going to take a little bit. But predictively it's going to wind up here in the downloads folder. So once it's done, there we go. Legend of Zelda or Korean Time right there. We'll minimize the site for now because we don't need it right now. Alright, and now we just unzip the Ocarina of Time. Keep in mind I'm using 7-zip to do so, but the default one built into Windows will work in this case, but I recommend 7-zip because some files on the site are RAR files, so you'll need WinRAR or IZARC or something like that. But in this case, we just unzip the file, and now we just need to put it in a safe place. It could be anywhere, but I recommend you go to the emulator's directory. A nice folder will be placed inside the start menu for Project 64. Now on Windows 7, you can right click and open file location. Specifically, the default location will be here. So, we're going to start a new folder. I'm going to call it rounds, but you can call it whatever you want. And so now we're going to go in there. We're going to take the Legend of Zelda ROM and drag it in there. 
All right, now we just need to get it to work. First, we're going to launch the emulator. Click OK to the language select. Now we need to tell it where the ROM is. So we go to File, choose ROM Directory. We click ROMs because by default it thinks it'll be in the Project 64 1.6 directory. And there you go. The list of all the ROMs in that directory, in this case just Ocarina Time. Now before we get playing, we're going to configure it. First graphics. Now you can change the resolution. It has widescreen support. Make sure you select 64 bit by the way when you're selecting resolution. You don't want to make it that cruddy 16 bit color that doesn't look very good and not very accurate. And then full screen VSync. I recommend triple buffer if you have a decent graphics card. Same thing with anisotropic filtering, put it on max. Full screen anti aliasing on max. Now, if your graphics card isn't up to snuff, you can lower these settings and make it work potentially better, like lowering the render resolution, running in a window at 320 by 240, and also, by the way, this is optional for texture improvement, Super 2X Sol. Now, I personally think default looks best, but if you're into sharper textures, then go ahead and click that. It can distort some textures and not, doesn't always look favorable. Feel free to experiment to your liking. So we click OK. Alright, and next we need to set it up for input. Now, you're going to want to use a controller of some kind since this is an N64 game and it isn't always comfortable to use the keyboard since you'll need an analog stick to reliably control your character in most cases. So, we're going to go to Options and Settings. And I recommend you change the input controller plugin to Enrage's Direct Input 8. That way you'll have more control over the options. Also, just note, this is a plugin based emulator, so if you find more graphics plugins on the internet, they'll be out there, but the default should work fine for most cases. So we're going to go to OK, go to Configure Controller, Plugin, and we'll be presented with this screen. Nothing is set by default, so we have to go around and give everything an assignment. But first we're going to go down to Devices, select a controller, Xbox 360 for Windows in my case, go down to Controls, First, we're going to start with the digital pad, the thing that almost nobody ever used, unless you're playing, I don't know, Mega Man Legend was the only game I could think of that used it extensively, but I'm probably wrong, there's a lot more out there. But anyways, let's go to up, press up on the controller, left, right, down, and so on. Start, A. B, and if you want it, it can be X, but that's up to you. Left trigger, right trigger, Z trigger. Again, it could be either trigger. Really, any of these could be anything you want. I'm just going with my preferences. The C buttons, I'm going to assign to the right analog stick, but Again, you can configure this however you like. I will confess to it feeling not quite right using the analog stick for buttons. So we're going to save. All right, one last thing. Now all we need to do is select options, audio plugin, sync game to audio, and you're already done. That should be your graphics, audio, and controller settings set up. So really all that's left to do is double click on the game. And there you go, Nintendo 64. And after that, the Ocarina of Time start screen. I, I'm sure we all have fond memories of this start screen.
By the way, if you're curious, you can full screen it by going to Options and clicking full screen right there, or pressing Alt Enter. I can't full screen it right now because of the way my recording software works, but what have you. Anyways, that should be everything you need to know in order to download and play pretty much any Nintendo 64 ROM. This emulator has a high compatibility rate and a high rate of speed relative to processor performance. It's not perfect, and you may need to go to alternate alt emulators for certain games. You have to research into specific ones, but this one should work for you for most cases. So, thanks for watching. I'm hoping this helped you get into emulation a little bit further, and I hope you have a good one.